Indira Gandhi National Open University and the Catholic Bishop Conference of India, I deem it a privilege to extend a warm welcome to the chief guest of this occasion, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, former president of India. The CBCI IGNO chair established in the year 2000 is aimed at addressing the needs of the, dis of the disadvantaged sections through educational programs. On behalf of IGNO, I cordially welcome Cardinal Oswald Gracious, Vice President, CBCI. It is a pleasure to welcome Dr. Babu Joseph, spokesperson of the CBCI. Sir, the dedicated team working for this chair comprises of Prof Professor Gracious Thomas, the coordinator, and many social work experts drawn from all over the country. A warm welcome to all of those who have been helping us in this endeavor. Indira Gandhi National Open University, I am proud to say, is a success story in democratization of education in the whole world. With 18.5 million, so 18.5 lakh students, 1.85 million students on the roll, and with a diverse cross-section, maximum diversity of cross-section of students covering rural, underprivileged sections of the society, now our technological capabilities of reaching the unreached are uh, unimaginable to be frank. With DTH in operation from 1st of November onwards, last 2007 November 1st onwards, we reach 88 million homes, sir, 8 million homes. Today we have entered into a memorandum of understanding with a corporate for IPTV launching of all our educational programs. And we use technology to reach the unreached. When we look out to our student population, we will see that majority of our students are from the rural areas. And large number of students from the, large percentage of our students are from underprivileged sections of the society. So we and CBCA also share common objectives in, uh, in achieving the social objectives of the country. And our educational programs are not only a model for a developing country like India, it, could be a mo it is a model for other developing countries as well. Sir, you will, uh, you will be glad to know that, that the program you have initiated in this university, the Pan-African Network Program, is going on very well. Uh, we just started with tele-education, uh, and you have initiated such programs in telemedicine and other, other institutions as well. And the objectives of the uh, CBCI uh, chair, as well as other activities which we are uh, having now, they are all manifestations of uh, providing a learning, for, learning and training for development. We look at the knowledge and skills which are required for the development of this country, and then we, we see to it that this knowledge and skills are provided through uh, our technological capabilities, our study centers distributed across the country, and a number of other activities. We believe that the inclusive growth of the society can only be achieved by inclusive education. We also believe that uh, by providing knowledge, education and knowledge, we will be able to uh, bridge the gap which we uh, see uh, compared to developed countries. Uh, we know that when it, comes to the, uh, when it comes to development of this country, we have to look at the three educational parameters, uh, mainly achieving literacy, achieving school education targets, and then post-school higher education opportunities. We also look at the reasons for this gap existing in the society. We believe that deprivations of any kind, that these are the re reasons for the 
conflicts in the society and we look at educational deprivation as a, as a sort of a crime and therefore our primary objective is to provide education opportunities to each and everyone in the country and Indira Gandhi National Open University uh, through such activities, through collaboration of such activities we concentrate on all these areas. When I think of blessed traditions of Calcutta, what comes to my mind is not so much the numerous honors and awards she received, they are in fact quite many, but the quality of her life and the difference she made to the lives of those around her. Wherever she went, she carried with her one message, the message of love manifested in service and sacrifice. She de derived this perennial message from Jesus Christ, who made the su supreme sacrifice of his life on the cross for the sake of human beings. Blessed Teresa spared no effort to live an authentic Christian and human life. She always remained in the presence of God and listened to his voice whispering to her to love as he loved. She believed strongly that intense love does not measure it just gives. Blessed Teresa possessed a magnetic personality. She radiated spontaneous joy in all her life that she could say, I am so used to seeing smile on our people, even the dying ones smile. I had met Mother Teresa on many occasions. I was able to interact with her. And permit me to give you a few incidents from her life, rather than reflections about her. I remember I was in Rome, a student, and she was addressing all the students over there. And one of the participants asked her, Mother, you have so many houses all over the world. What are your principles of management and what are your principles of economics? Because it requires a lot of money to run so many houses to aid so many poor people. Mother Teresa stood up and said, Sir, I have not studied management. I have not studied finance. But I have studied the gospel. And in the gospel it is written that God in heaven cares even for the birds of the air. He knows how many hair you have on your head. I'm sure he will take care of my poor people. And everybody in the audience stood up and gave her a standing ovation. She was a person of very deep faith. This motivated all she did. I remember interacting with her once. She herself told me, how this faith held her up and never failed her on many occasions. She told me that one, mo one morning after prayer, the sisters came and told her, Mother, there isn't sufficient food to feed our people in our home today. So let's do this. Let's give them a little bit for breakfast, a little more for lunch, and keep a little for dinner. Mother said she thought a moment and she told sister, no, God will not let me down. You give them a full breakfast, whatever is there. You sisters have a cup of coffee and go to the chapel and pray. No breakfast for you. And mother told me about 10 o'clock that morning in Calcutta, a van drove up outside the house and they had brought meals from some wedding reception to be held later on, they wanted to give to the poor. And she said there was more than enough. And she told me, not once in her whole life had her poor people have to go hungry because there was no food. She says, God never let me down. Never let those people down. I am delighted to participate in the first Mother Teresa Memorial Lecture. My greetings to all the distinguished invitees assembled here. When I think of Mother Teresa, I remember 
with reverent with reverence my visit to nirmal hirday the home for dying destitute as established by mother teresa i saw the beacon light of the law care for the uncared and kindness being showered to all also i <coughs> i witnessed the real time action of providing love and dignity to life this name itself mother teresa i am sure will particularly the students and the teachers to emulate mother teresa in fulfilling their social responsibility how to remember the great soul how to remember the great soul mother teresa and to give her tribute i felt let us remember the great human beings we come across so that is the big tribute we can give to mother teresa when you remember great human beings dear friends when i meet you i would like to talk on the topic giving dignity to the human life giving dignity to human life as it is said it would be tragic if the laws and ethics in society are so petrified they are unable to respond to the unending challenge of evolutionary and revolutionary changes in our society in that respect it is important to draw a road map for the continuous ev evolution of our society and the and the legal system in an integrated way for giving dignity to human life which is crucial to national development friends every citizen in the country has a right to live with dignity every citizen has a right to aspire for distinction availability of a large number of opportunities to resort to just and fair means in order to attain the dignity and distinction is what democracy is all about that is what our constitution is all about and that is what makes life wholesome and worth living in a true and vibrant democracy at this point i would like to say that at social levels it is necessary to work for unity of minds the increasing intolerance for views of others and the increasing a uh, contempt and about ways of lives of others or their religions or the expressions of these these differences through lawless violence against people cannot be justified in any context all of us in different fields have to work hard and do everything to make our every individual every individual's right that is the very foundation of the democratic values which i believe is our civilization heritage and the very soul of our nation we have to fight today according to me is the social and the economic equality in various aspects of life for certain percentage of our population india's movement in removing this inequality will become a trend setter for the whole planet hence the important question which i would like to reflect today is when before 2020 will india become an economically developed nation and will you be able to give dignity to every citizen of the country how to give dignity human life after july 2007 i have met over 1 million people and youth visited more than 11 state number of times and visited six countries abroad and met 
the Indian community. Based on my interaction with the people from different walks of life and youth after my presidency, I have come across a number of social rights issues. I was thinking for a long time which has raised certain questions in my mind. How to find solution for these questions jointly? Let me discuss the question first. Number one, can we totally eradicate poverty and build capacity to everyone to work according to personal aptitude? Can we enable peaceful environment to individual and families irrespective of caste, creed and religion or status? Can we eliminate human scavenging, rat picking and rehabilitate all the street children and destitute women? Can we ensure nobility and justice to every citizen? Can we give a dignified life to leprosy treated patients, AIDS patients? Can we take care of children of prisoners and, and reformed prisoners and eliminate child labor, female feticide and crime against women? Can we give dignified and secure living for senior citizens and differently challenged people? Can we treat the tribal citizen as our own in all our action? Can we protect the farmers from various problems with a system-oriented approach and value at, at their, uh, to their profession? Can we make the system of governance transparent and use the governance for uplifting the quality of life of people by empowering the people to choose the right leaders? While this measuring tool for the economic growth, I visualize the following distinctive profile emerging in our nation by the year 2020 and provide dignity to every citizen. A nation where the rural and urban divide has reduced to a thin line. A nation where there is an equitable distinction and adequate access to energy and quality water. A nation where agriculture, industry and service sector work together in symphony. A nation where education with value system is not denied to any meritorious candidate because of societal or economic discrimination. A nation which is the best destination for the most talented scholars, scientists and investors. A nation where the best of health care is available to all. A nation where the governance is responsive, transparent and corruption free. A nation where poverty has been totally eradicated, illiteracy removed and crimes against women and children are absent, none in the society feels alienated. A nation that is prosperous, healthy, secure, devoid of terrorism, peaceful and happy and conflict with conflict continues with a sustainable growth path. Finally, a nation that is one of the best places to live in and proud of its leadership through creative and effective leadership in parliament, state assemblies and other institutions of the state. For the society as a whole to be dignified we need creation of dignity in family, a dignity in education, dignity in service, dignity in career, and dignity in business and industry, dignity in civil administration, dignity in politics, dignity in government, dignity in law and, law and order, dignity in justice. I am sure the members of the Indira Gandhi National Open University can become a catalyst for this mission of giving dignity to human life of one billion people by realizing some aspect, not all, some aspect of the visualization based individual core competence. This can become a model for the rest of the five billion, uh, five billion people in the planet yet to follow. My best wishes to all the members of Indira Gandhi National Open University success in their mission of developing quality human resource which is vital for a quality quality 
quality human resource with value system which is vital for accelerating the process of social transformation and giving dignity to human life may god bless you all friends thank you mother teresa was an apostle of love compassion and most wonderfully of justice her actual name was agnes although she was called gongcha meaning flower bud she was known to us by various names such as saint of the gutters angel of mercy mother of the poor living saint apostle of love and peace to name a few this evening we have been graciously blessed by the honorable presence of his excellency dr apj abdul kalam former president of india who delivered the inaugural lecture to honor mother teresa on the theme giving dignity to human life on behalf of igno the catholic bishops conference of india the cbca chair the delegates and guests and the organizing committee i wish to express our sincere appreciation to you sir for accepting our invitation and for sharing your valuable thoughts with us as well as for interacting with our students and the delegates we have greatly benefited from your lecture and we look forward to similar opportunities in future to listen to you sir thank you very much sir